Hello. Oh, it's been a while since I said that. But um, sorry, sorry about being MIA for the last couple of months. But I'm back again, and this semester I'm going to be mainly focusing on Orgo 2, as you can probably tell. But uh, if you guys are taking Orgo 1, feel free to leave some comments on topics down below. And if I have time, I'll try and cover them. So, are you guys ready to quiz yourself on the pinnacle rearrangement? Okay, I'm assuming one of you guys said yes, so we'll keep going. The pinnacle reaction is actually one of the reactions that I hated most from Orgo 2. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of the reactions that I walked into my final not really understanding still. But I was lucky enough to get away with it because the pinnacle rearrangement didn't show up on the final. But hopefully you guys won't have to do that. Um, recently, uh, la just last week when I was tutoring this reaction, it finally clicked for me. And hopefully, after this video series, it'll click for you guys too. This very first part, I'm going to show you guys how to recognize the pinnacle rearrangement on the test. Uh, let's see, second, what's the point of the pinnacle rearrangement? And third, slash fourth, I'm going to show you guys how to easily do the product prediction by showing you how the mechanism behind it works. Okay? And because uh, I saw in the comments, a lot of you guys have said that you like my videos, but you'd like more examples. That's why part two and part three are part of the series. Part two is going to be a harder example of the pinnacle rearrangement, and part three is going to be an extra hard version. Okay? So be sure you check those out as well. Okay? Ready to begin? All right, so first, how do we even recognize the pinnacle rearrangement, right? So the key thing that you guys need to look for is a vicinal dial and an acid catalyst, just like over here. Now you might be wondering, what does vicinal dial really mean? Uh, vicinal is a word that you hear a lot in orgo, but um, let's focus on the dial part first, okay? So di means two, ol stands for like alcohol, so two alcohols, and then the vicinal part just means that the two alcohols are on neighboring carbons, like this one right here. They're not on the same carbons, but adjacent carbons, hence vicinal dials. Um, vicinal you'll hear a lot, so you might as well learn it right here. Okay. So yeah, vicinal dials, and that's why I call them um, OH neighbors, because they're not on the same carbon. All right, and then acid catalyst, the most common one for the pinnacle rearrangement is H2SO4, which becomes H3O plus when you throw it into water. So don't forget your acid catalyst. You need it for the pinnacle rearrangement, okay? All right, so now that you know how to recognize it, um, don't just um, get too comfortable with this form, though, because your professor can totally just change it up and turn into this. He can just rotate the dials um, sideways, add some stereochemistry, and attach it to a ring to distract you. But it's still the pinnacle rearrangement. Okay? So, yeah. You have that acid there, you have the vicinal dials. This um, pinnacle rearrangement is definitely possible. All right, so now that you know how to recognize it, let's talk about what's the point of the pinnacle rearrangement. Um, very often in orgo, we focus so much on the mechanism, the arrow pushing, the molecules, where they go, but we forget like the, the main point of the reaction. Why do we learn it anyways? anyways what, or what are we doing in the reaction? Well, in this reaction, all you're really doing is just using the acid catalyst to destabilize the diols, and then that forces them to rearrange in order to be more stable. And that's pretty much it. If you keep remembering that, that'll help you figure out the mechanism and explain why this goes from here to the mysterious products. And that's where you guys come in. Your job is to f take a guess and come up with the product. Okay? Uh, don't worry if you don't really know or don't really remember it. Just treat it like a test question. You have to put something down. So just take a guess. Okay? Hit pause and come back in a couple of seconds. Alrighty, these are the products that you guys should have gotten. Uh, did you guys get these? If you didn't, then you're wrong. But who cares? Doesn't matter. We're just practicing. Anyways, so you should have gotten either this or this. And these are the same exact molecules because you can just flip this over. And the same for this one. If there's no chiral centers in your product, then you can just flip it and it'll be the same thing. Okay? And so what basically happens in this reaction is that the acid destabilizes the diol, and then one of the OHs um, is going to turn into a C double bonded O, or a carbonyl. And then the other one, the one that, that gets destabilized, is going to get ejected out. And that's, this is where he went. And notice that, uh, and he becomes water. But notice that I used the red H, I did it on purpose. The H that the OH receives is from the acid catalyst. And that's the acid catalyst's job. 
So it'll be a little, a little more clear when we go through the mechanism. But this is going to be your general product prediction trend. Okay? All right, so yeah, let's go over the mechanism then so you guys can see everything that happens. All right, so the first thing you want to do is draw out your H3O plus molecule. I'm just going to draw it over here. And then, what do you think the first step is going to be? Um, oh yeah, by the way, so we definitely need the, we need to do something with the H3O plus because nothing will happen if there's nothing else in our beaker. These OHs won't react with each other, really. So yeah, what do you think the first step is going to be? All right, well, the first step is going to be, uh, well, I'm going to base it off of this product. So let's have, let's see. Oh yeah, and also when your um, dial is symmetrical like this and both carbons are you know equally substituted, they have the same number of carbons on both sides, then it doesn't matter which OH you react with because they're equally stable. So I'm just going to choose to react with, uh, with this one. And he's going to grab an H from your acid catalyst because um, that's what acids do. They throw away hydrogens. So your OH is the most basic thing in your molecule, and it's going to grab that acidic hydrogen. And then you need to draw an arrow from the bond to your O because H only wants one bond. He's getting one right there, so he releases this bond, and the electrons go to the O. All right, and then what do we get from there? All right, hit pause because I'm going to jump straight to the intermediate. Okay, so you basically just redraw everything you have before, and the only thing that really changes is that this OH on the right side now has a hydrogen off of it. And I'm going to just draw the bonds, and you should do that too, because it'll make it more easier. And since OH attacked, I'm going to keep using blue to show that the bond, or electrons, came from the O, and then the H is over here. Okay, now I'm missing something. So, hit pause if I'm going too quickly, but what I'm missing is... A charge, positive or negative? Positive. And where is it? Well, it's on the O, because the O lost electrons when he attacked. So now he's positive, and now he's destabilized. Okay, so now that he's destabilized, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, if you're not sure, take a look at your products. What happens to this guy? He leaves. And if, you're, if you don't have the product, just think about it. You, he's unstable, he's positive, he wants electrons, so he's going to take the electrons from this bond right here and just leave. Alright, draw the next intermediate. Okay, just like before, we draw everything you had before. OH is still here. Now we just released our H2O. I'm not going to draw that because he's just like, you know, there. I'm going to draw him. I'm going to save space, and then, yeah, is this it? Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer, so I hit pause, but you need a charge now, okay? You need a positive charge, and the answer is right here. Positive charge right here, or a carbocation. And why do you need a positive charge? Well, the carbon lost electrons, and the old took it from the bond. All right, so now our acid has destabilized the thiols, now they're going to rearrange to stabilize. So in the pinnacle rearrangement, you always, always, always want to get the positive charge onto the carbon next to the O, because the O is really, really cool. He can stabilize that positive charge. So what do we do? We have to move one of these bonds here that, that, that's attached to the, the carbon that's attached to the O. <laughs> so either this bond or this bond. You can't really move this bond to that because it'll break the molecule. It doesn't make any sense. So. Um, we, you look for hydrogens they can move, um, but we don't have any hydrogens. These are methyl groups, so you're forced to do a methyl shift. And the way it works is you draw an arrow from the bond that you're going to move. You go to the positive charge, where you want to move it. So it goes like, whoosh, methyl shift. Okay, uh, go ahead and draw your next intermediate. And try and be one step ahead of me while we do this mechanism. Okay, so this time, this methyl group has migrated over, so now I'm going to draw them over here, okay? And our OH is still over here. Okay, nothing's happened to him. So where has the positive charge gone now? Is it still here? Nope, not possible, because he just got electrons. 
and that's what the arrow is telling us. But where do we lose electrons? Well, this carbon, because this methyl group here took the electrons and left. And there you go. Now, you might think, like, okay, why do we do that? That's not that good. Well, that's fine, because the O, like I said, is very, very cool. He's very powerful. He has lone electrons here that can resonate down and fix that positive charge. Okay? And notice I said resonate, so we're, we need resonance arrows for this next part, not mechanism arrows, where we just go forward. So yeah, his electrons come down so that, and not to the positive charge. Notice I'm going to the bond, and that's how we form this C double bond O carbonyl bond. Okay? All right, and now notice I used resonance arrows, double, double head re resonance arrows, not normal forward mechanism arrows. So now you have a double bond, you have your oxygen, and you still have your H here, okay? And the positive charge just got fixed because these two electrons came down and this carbon just got an electron. But you still need that charge. Where is that positive charge? Take a guess. It's on the O. Why? Because O, the oxygen, lost electrons in that resonance. All right, so now we're almost done. Look how similar our intermediate looks like, looks to our product. All right, so what do you think the next step will be? All right, so I'll give you a little, oh, I'll help you out. So this water, well, this hydronium, H3O+, plus, turned into water. So he's now, let's say, over here as water. He's going to help this oxygen out by depronating it, by grabbing the hydrogen. Okay, and what that does is that it allows these elect And my camera ran out of batteries and died. So yeah, before I got cut off, what I was trying to say was that the water molecule that the H3O plus became can now help us out and act as a catalyst again by pulling off this hydrogen that's attached to the positive O because that allows these electrons in this OH bond to go onto the O and make it neutral and allow us to convert our intermediate into our final product. And that's it for the mechanism. All right, so hopefully these two bullet points I told you before make a little bit more sense now that you, you can see the entire mechanism while I'm dodging it. Uh, yeah, destabilize the dials first, right? Force it to rearrange into a more stable conformation. Yeah, it's kind of cool, but uh, yeah. If you guys would like to, feel free to go ahead and try out the mechanism for this problem here. Do the mechanism, see if you can get this product or this product. And once again, they're the same thing. You could just flip it since there's no chiral centers. Uh, for any of you who are wondering why there's wedge and dash here, but no wedge and dash here, it's because uh, this is a chiral center. One, two, three, four different groups. But here you have two methyl groups, so they're, they're the same. So there's no chiral center. But anyways, do the mechanism, see if you can get the product. Um, if you guys get stuck or something goes weird and you can't get to the products, feel free to, to um, do your mechanism, take a picture, it, upload it on some image hosting website like tinypick.com and just post your mechanism in the comments down below and I'll take a look, all right? So I'll link you guys to part two, which is the trickier version of this pinnacle problem. So make sure you watch that. Uh, just in case it pops up on your test. But before I give you guys the link, I just want to take a second to thank Sophia Nur, who's a student at U Maryland College Park. She and uh, other people like Professor Chip Salenza from Boston University, and all my other patrons who are helping support this uh, video series and Orgo Made Easy. And uh, my other patrons on Patreon, they're the people who are really allowing me to take time out to create these videos. So I just wanted to thank all of you if you are helping me, helping support me. Uh, for any of you guys who um, feel like my channel is helpful uh, and would like to help me out a little bit, feel free to check out patreon.com slash orgomadeeasy. And it would mean the world to me if you guys could like pitch in like a dollar even. That, that makes a difference. And what it does is that it allows me to free up more time to do this. And I have some rewards like um, I have a $2, if you pitch in $2, you can get entered in my free tutoring lottery. And every month, you might be one of the two lucky winners who get a, who get a whole free hour of tutoring. Okay? So anyways, if you like this video, make sure you like it down there and share this video with your friends. Uh, make sure you get, make sure, blah. make sure you get subscribed if you want to stay updated when I, when I make new videos. And the link for part two will be right here.
just click. Okay, well, if you're on a mobile platform like uh, iPhone or iPad, there's nothing, and I just look crazy. So the link to part two will be in the description box down below. I'll see you guys there. Bye.